I was introduced some years ago by, by Reverend W.T. Glenn to an author named Lord John, John Oakland. And he has a book and it says the bush is still burning. Still burning, still burning. What a wonderful catalog of the spectacular calling of Moses. Yeah. And I want you to know tonight that God is still calling come workers. On, come on, come on. And God calls workers who can get the job done. It's not just about doing something, but it's about getting something done. With God's sanction, blessing, and power. Unction makes a world of difference as we seek to do God's will. And so I thank God as I heard that Moses was a released leader. But when we look at the text, we discover secondly that even though he was released by God, he was a reluctant leader. Moses at this point in his life and for this particular assignment uh, could not take up membership in the Willing Workers Organization because he was a reluctant leader. He was not initially willing uh, to carry out his tasks. He expressed his unwillingness uh, to take on this tremendous assignment. And he did it with excuses. But I want to tell you, he does not succeed. The pessimistic forecast for an unsuccessful outcome has prevented many from venturing into God-given opportunities to impact the world for Christ. Because we start saying, what if? If I take this church on the backside of the death, what if they don't raise enough money to pay? But did God send you there? When I became the pastor of the church I grew up in, it was a little red brick church on the side of the road. There was a housing project on each end of the street. I was in school commuting six hours one way for my first two and a half years. And when I wanted to quit, I thought about there were only two people in my church with college degrees. And every time I wanted to quit, I said, I got to be number three. And they called us the Project Church. Because there was people from the project coming in our church. They were deacons in the church. They were sitting on the front row. I became the pastor of the Project Church. I want to tell you, you can work your way up. You can stop being reluctant. To go where God tell you to go. And I want to tell you, now we're not the project church. They call us the cathedral now. Because I want to tell you, I can't even count how many degree persons we have. We've got three assistant district attorneys. Because I wasn't reluctant. I wanted to do God's work. Yeah, that is here reluctant leadership. And I want to tell you tonight, you need to consider the patriotic views that Moses had. Yeah. That one could have easily anticipated that, that no mission could have been more welcome to him than to be employed in the national emancipation of Israel. Yet Moses communicated his reluctance to this assignment and stated a variety of objections. He did not possess adequate excuses because God met every excuse with a way out of his excuse. You see what Moses, the reluctant leader, did is he was operating with underestimation. Here Moses in his effort to shy away from the mission is underestimating himself. 
say. But he's also underestimated God. And I want to tell you, there are a lot of beloved believers. You underestimate yourself. And you underestimate God. If you learn that the presidency of this convention could be before you pass. If you stop underestimating yourself. For I hear Moses saying, who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh. Who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh. You see, Moses had been rescued as a crying baby from the river by Pharaoh's God. He was the perfect king to go to his stepfather. Moses who had been educated in Egyptian school would understand Egyptian vernacular and Pharaoh would understand every word that he would say. Moses was raised as a son of Pharaoh's daughter, but now he's saying, Who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh. My brothers and sisters, God does not call us to go anywhere. Yeah, but he underestimates the ability that he had to be effective among the people. He was uh, producing native questions and having the surfacing of, of native feelings. He is a reluctant leader because he underestimates, but then he's a reluctant because he's unaware. Moses appeared to be unaware. Totally of the vast nature of his God. He is being sent to do a great task. But he's being sent by a great God. And Moses then answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me. Now hearken unto my gods. For they will believe me for they will say he already know what they're going to say before he ever gets there that Jehovah had not appeared unto me Moses is like many of us today we're talking about what they're going to say I'm trying to get out of here but last year we were trying to build a church and we needed some money for soft costs and for engineers and architects. And when we went there and made our loan application, I'm not ashamed to tell you we got turned down. We had it done by CPA and advice of a former bank president, but they turned us down. But then They wanted 750000 for a building that had $6 million insurance on it because they were trying to get out of that white flight, you know. And I said, well, we get turned down for 250000 but I'm going to go back again, fix up another application with the same number and resubmit it because I heard God tell me go forward in a week and about three days the man called my cell phone from the bank and the devil stopped playing with me when you answer this they gonna tell you they turn it down but I thought about what God told me to go forward and I didn't hit the end button on my iPhone I hit that green button spoke to him and he spoke to me. He said, Pastor, you go tell your people y'all can move in in about four or five days. Don't be reluctant. I'm trying not to get off right here. But he's able. 